Good Friday afternoon, Houston. I'm KU2 11 meteorologist Kim Castro. Big updates to walk you through, including that disturbance that we've been monitoring in the Gulf. But I want to start off with the heavy downpours because they may have caught you by surprise. I mean, it was sunny, hot for one moment, and then the next there's a deluge. Yeah, those are the tropical rain bands that we've been warning about. Regardless of if a system developed or not in the Gulf, anytime we get a low pressure area of storms, whether it be a wave, a depression, a tropical system or whatnot, it does bring impulses of energy and we are tracking that this afternoon. So we've seen a big cluster of storms that passed through downtown now pushing towards Bush. I'm going to heighten the view here so you can see how it continues to hold its intensity as it's tracking north at around 25 miles an hour within the storm. I'm not looking at any hail. The parameter that I'm watching is the wind speed, so it's got wind gusts at 50 miles an hour. That means it's just under a severe thunderstorm criteria, which starts at 58 miles an hour. So treat this as a severe thunderstorm as it passes through you. So it's an umble right now. It's going to head towards Conroe in about 30 minutes and then Panorama Village in about 40 minutes. You'll notice in addition to the wind, the heavy rain, there are frequent flashes of lightning and this extends all the way through spring and again into the woodlands. There are many more areas to monitor that aren't as strong for the time being, but uh, they do have again the healthy rain. So right now 290 for the most part is in the clear. Tomball though, you're also part of that special weather statement. So right on you is some moderate rain in the next five minutes. You'll see that deeper red push into the city and that's going to bring you the torrential downpours that I was talking about. So it's very, very heavy rain. Big drops means reduced visibility on the road. So if you can avoid hitting the road for the next 30 minutes, that's going to make it a lot better for you. In fact, behind that, you're going to get a nice clearing. It's going to be like nothing ever happened, really. Tracking some more shower activity along I-10, the Katy Freeway, out towards Columbus. There's going to be a shower that lifts up near Sealy here in a couple of minutes, and then there are scattered storms behind that in the Richmond area. Sugarland, you saw rain about 10 minutes ago. That has since wrapped up, so you're getting a nice little break from that. The coastline is pretty clear. There was a little storm that was trying to get towards Bay Harbor, but has since fizzled out. And then Galveston Pleasure Pier is fairly quiet. In fact, it looks beautiful there. I'm going to show you the camera shot here in a second. But here's the big picture in the Gulf. You'll notice this broad area of counterclockwise circulation. That's the open wave that we've been tracking passing through the Yucatan, passing through the Bay of Campeche and getting closer and closer towards the upper Texas coastline. Now, we just received confirmation that the center of this cluster has passed through South Texas. And so the probability of development from this is now gone. I'll get to that in a moment, but wow, it does uh, make for a really nice day along the island right now. Beautiful blue water in Galveston. That's a shot at Pleasure Pier. Not a ton of activity out there right now, and I would just monitor um, the waves for today and tomorrow, even though we don't have that system that is approaching our coastline. When we do get some gusty wind, it ruffles up the waves. It can create some rip current risks. I haven't seen anything just yet, but something to keep an eye out for tomorrow in case you were headed to the island planning a little beach vacation. 95 degrees right now at IAH, still stormy there. Anytime there's lightning, monitor your flight times. There will likely be some impacts from that. Planes can't take off if there are thunderstorms around. So until those settle down, you will likely be grounded for a few minutes. Up by two degrees from yesterday, so ample energy in the atmosphere. That is going to use up a lot of the tropical moisture and bring us more scattered storms throughout the next few hours. Hours. By the way, it feels like 104 degrees. So this time of year, you can't just pay attention to the actual air temperature in your phone app. You got to uh, factor in the dew points and both of those numbers combined create um, a more accurate feel for your skin. Temperatures are going to dip down when you get the rain cooled air. So I think we get another round of thunderstorms in the city center downtown by three and four o'clock. That's why you'll notice that those temperatures drop down momentarily, but the actual 
peak heating of the day, so when we get a break from the shower activity, does take us to 96 degrees. So that's right on par with where we should be for this time of year. We're going to repeat that temperature forecast pretty steady throughout the rest of the weekend. Notice high end rain chances for today and tomorrow. These are the two days that we're going to use up that tropical moisture in the Gulf. And then by Sunday, that's wrung out. We just get a little remnant shower passing through in the afternoon. I don't think that's going to be much of a problem. I don't think you're going to have to alter plans on Sunday. Today and tomorrow, though, uh, the radar is something to have at the poor forefront. Definitely check it before you hit the road. Our flood risk for today is there, but it's a low risk. It's a one on the one to four scale. That means in these pockets of heavy rain, we could see a brief high water spot. Is localized street flooding possible? Yes, I think it's going to be the exception, though, not the rule, because the storms, as I'm watching them, are moving pretty quickly. They're not staying stalled. We're not seeing what's called training thunderstorms. That means redevelopment in the same area. But we'll monitor it. If we see something suspicious, we'll make sure we send you an alert straight to your phone. Just have that K2 you have downloaded and have the alerts turned on. The bigger risk for localized street flooding is going to be for South Texas. Brownsville is under a threat level two on the one to four scale, and that's no surprise. That's where the majority of the energy is focused. You can see it here on future track. So let me take you through the remainder of your Friday afternoon. What's it going to look like at four or five o'clock? Still looking at the threat of a couple of bubbling thunderstorms in Harris County, and this could again cause some delays at the airport. But beyond that, a lot of this energy is going to start to lift north. So showers are going to push through Conroe into Huntsville and eventually out of our hair. We stay quiet through the late night Friday and through very early Saturday. But by Saturday, say 730 in the morning, that's when we're starting to usher in more tropical storms. So first starting off in Columbus, in El Campo, moving through Katy, moving through Sugarland. And I do think we have the chance to see some of these storms even in the loop and the beltway by early Saturday. I give you that heads up because I know a lot of you try to get out there early on your weekend to do those weekend long runs, for example, before it gets too hot, well, you're going to have to monitor the threat for lightning early tomorrow. As we go into the afternoon, it's still stormy. So I think tomorrow is going to be the wetter day between today and tomorrow. Still looking at a lot of energy in the atmosphere, but at least it starts to wrap up earlier. I think by three o'clock, most of the shower activity is starting to exit the coastline and we get a really quiet Saturday evening. So that will be very nice. Sunday will look a lot better too. Like I mentioned, the system already making land interaction in South Texas. And so for that reason, we are not going to be tracking further development, although because we are on the east side, the dirty side, we're certainly going to accumulate a couple of inches of rainfall. I think we actually get the majority of the rainfall today and tomorrow could be maybe two inches and maybe up to three in some localized areas, but 0% chance of additional development with that, which is good news. We've been monitoring that closely and yesterday it did get up to a 50% chance of development. Hey, a brand new update that's also of interest for the Atlantic Basin, the eastern seaboard particularly. We've got a brand new first hurricane of the season, Eric. So this has gained the intensity, it has gained the composure, the organization, and it continues to intensify. In fact, it's expected to undergo rapid intensification as we head into the weekend. So already on track to become a Cat 2 hurricane by early tomorrow, then a Cat 3 major hurricane by early Sunday. And it doesn't stop there. The National Hurricane Center thinks it's going to keep growing into a category four hurricane by the start of the coming week. Now there is a good upper level steering current. I say good because it's going to play in our favor. High pressure is towards the east and as long as this is able to tug at Aaron, it would pull it north and away from the continental US. Regardless, there will be impacts along Florida and the Carolinas for high rip current risk, choppy waves, rough surf, but the impacts overall would be mitigated. So we'll continue to keep an eye on that and make sure Aaron takes that northerly turn instead of keeping its westerly track. Seven day forecast looks like this. So it's really a consistent forecast. Today and tomorrow are the wettest days. We've got tropical downpours both of these days because of that wave in the Gulf. 
Beyond that, you're holding on to a run of the mill summer afternoon thunderstorm chance. So anywhere between 20 to 40%, that's very manageable. You'll just have to keep your umbrella and watch the storms pass. Temperature wise, we are going to be in the mid 90s. All right, we have got meteorologist Chris Ramirez live at four o'clock in the afternoon and chief meteorologist David Paul with you at five, six and 10. Make sure to get your update because the tropics are starting to ramp up.